Hey, guitar lovers. Today, I'd like to share my harmonic language with you, more specifically, how I use four note structures as upper structures to create uh, interesting textures. This is like Cell by Starlight, and as an example. Okay, I could go on all day. Uh, this is, uh, I'm using the fifth and sixth string with uh, a string setup, so it gives me an octave lower to really highlight these upper structures. And I'll teach you how to do this, what I'm actually doing and how you can study this. So let's switch back to normal guitar and I'll explain the way I'm thinking. The first uh, most important uh, insight is that all four note harmonic diatonic events, meaning every time you play any collection of uh, four random notes, this will always, always produce uh, one of the five uh, chordal families, what I call harmonic atoms. It will always be one, three, five, seven, or a one, three, uh, five, nine or a 13511 or a 13711 or a 1379 chord. That means that if you're just picking for example a four random keys on a keyboard, let's say a C D E F or something, you'll always uh, get something uh, predictably which is I one of those chords. It doesn't matter what collection of notes you can pick. I don't know. Let's do A B E, F. Okay, just for fun. I don't even know what it is. A, B, A, B, E, F. Okay. So that to me is this, which is 1, 3, 7, 11 of B. And you can really do this a lot and you'll find that all chords, no matter what they are, will uh, produce this. And the first step is learning how these combinations of notes uh, work together. And I'll demonstrate my upper structure concept today on a chordal family called uh, X add 11, which means 1, 3, 5, and 11. And of course, I have the Harmonic Explorer, which I programmed, which can really help with this stuff. And I'll show you the steps to getting to all these richer chords using upper structures like these. figuring out all their inversions. Okay, and then you can create these wonderful uh, five note textures, but let's begin in the beginning. Okay, so imagine right now we have a chordal family called one, three, five, and 11. Here are the steps I take to study it. Okay, in uh, the application, which is uh, free, it's on the web, you can absolutely use it uh, uh, truly free of charge. The first thing I'll study is how uh, to create all the shapes. I'm going to study variations of 1, 3, 5, 11 that occur in the C major scale. For example, the C major scale diatonically has a C11, a D minor 11. Let me kill that reverb for you, I'm sure it'll 
be easier to hear me, sorry. Okay, that's got to help. So in the key of C, we have C11, D minor 11, E minor 11, F sharp, F uh, sharp 11, G11, A minor 11, and B uh, minor 11. Okay? So when I'm studying the shapes, I try to reduce them to their types. And I can soundly say that there are only four types of 11 chords in the major scale. Instead of saying C, I'll say X because it's a stand-in for any scale, really. So the possibilities are an, a major 11 chord. Let me show you without the harmonic explorer. A ma uh, major 11 chord. minor chord, minor 11 chord, and diminished 11 chord. Okay, these things occur diatonically. And the first thing I'll learn is how to uh, do their inversions uh, on the top four strings in drop two using the Harmonic Explorer. This is an exercise called uh, shape creation. And what I'm doing is I'm going left to right starting on the second inversion. And I'll be playing uh, all inversions of uh, all types of chords uh, in each inversion. And you can really just practice this slowly, uh, open the application, and you can play along with it. I'll do it with you now. Okay, that's a very important beginning exercise because I'm generating the 16 shapes that are the very, each chord has four flavors. As we said, major sharp 11, major 11, minor 11, and diminished 11. And each chord has four inversions. So I'm really, my playground contains um, 16 shapes. So after I do the shape creation, I do an exercise called all inversions, which does a very a similar thing. I'm simply going to play all inversions of each chord. It's playing the same 16 shapes. This time I'm playing each chord four times before moving to the next one, starting on C sharp 11. Okay, this is again a very logical uh, part in my journey. That's how I study this stuff. And then I play a diatonic series, which means the diatonic uh, 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 chords of the scale uh, and all inversions. Let me start just for fun. Let's do a uh, first inversion, a little more interesting. Let's see how that looks. That means I'm starting on D minor 11, progressing diatonically through C major. Okay. Let Let's practice with the application. Okay. And then after I do this in all inversions, of course, we won't do that now. The final step is really doing voice leading, which is kind of a profound thing. It helps uh, to minimize the melodic change when you're uh, playing progressions. Let me demonstrate a cycle of sixths just for fun. 
The cycle of six means that I have the notes of the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A. And I'm moving uh, up a six between diatonic chord to diatonic chord. So my first chord is C11, moving up a sixth, which is actually easy to calculate by going down a third. You'll get A minor 11, and then going another third down, you'll get F sharp 11, and then another a third down, you'll get D minor. And this produces uh, uh, the chords for bo voice leading, which sounds like this. It's actually beautiful. Okay, and of course, I would actually learn uh, to play this, in this case, starting on third inversion, for example. So that would be starting here. Okay, cool. Then root. First inversion, second inversion, and so on. And of course, a very natural thing to do after you study uh, diatonic cycles is to play uh, standards. So I would definitely play, for example, Stella by Starlight, the song I demoed on a standard. This is very helpful. For example, I'm starting Stella by Starlight in 1, 3, 5s and 11s. This is a very interesting stepping stone to uh, improvisation. I'll show you later. Okay, so um, that would work this way. And that's the first thing I studied. Hard. Still suck. Okay, so remember at this point I have mastery of uh, four types of chords, uh, which are all 1, 3, 5, 11, and I have mastery of their inversions, and mastery, I mean I'm not a master of it, I mean worked on, and I have a good voice leading connections between them. Now let me show you what I think is really the exciting part. To me, um, the magic of voice leading doesn't necessarily occur when these structures are used uh, in the context of the root. What I mean is that, for example, I think uh, the chord B flat 11 sounds very cool as a B flat, but I'm pretty sure it sounds cooler as a C minor 7. Right? G11. C, B flat 11 over C, uh, A minor, which is G11 over A. So what I'm really doing is applying upper structures, or I'm applying uh, uh, these chords to a more sophisticated context. And let me give you one example of that, which is actually uh, not so terrible to practice. So here's how I would do it. Let me give the example of placing uh, an 11 chord on the seventh of a chord. I know this is advanced and challenging, but it's really uh, worthwhile. So that means I'm going to take C major seven, like Lydian, and I'm going to place uh, uh, an 11 chord on the seventh degree, which means I will produce, this is like B minor 11 over C. It's no coincidence that this sounds cool because this gives me the 3 and the 7, the sharp 11 and the 9. So I'm really playing a 3, 7, uh, sharp 11 and 9 chord. And the magic is that if I know my B minor 11s, I know my... Because this is B minor 11, right, as explained before, Now, I'm really playing inversions of the chord C uh, major 7, 9, 11, if I can manage to squeeze in the root, which is very difficult sometimes. The 
This is hard. This is easy. And this is hard. Okay, so I'm basically producing chords with five notes that typically have something more interesting than the one in the top voices. And the cool thing is, if this is C major 7, 9, sharp 11, I can change the type of chord I'm playing on the 7th of the C, which is B if it's major 7. But what if I want to make it a C7? That means that the uh, 7 of C is B flat, right? That would turn into this. So I have to adapt my chord. And that would make it a B flat augmented sharp 11. Okay, another beautiful structure. You can, uh, you can totally use it. Okay, so that gives you... If I want to make it minor 711, then I'm playing B flat... B flat at 11 over C. Because see how that worked? I changed the notes to adapt to different chord types. So if it's C major 7, it's B minor 11. If it's C7, uh, becomes B flat augmented uh, sharp 11. If it's C uh, minor 7, then I need to change the E to E flat and F sharp to F. That gives me B flat at 11. And even for half diminished, the chord doesn't change. So what I'm doing is really changing the notes according to different chord scales, which represent different chords. So this is C major 7 with Lydian accidentals, which are G major accidentals. This is G melodic minor accidentals because uh, it's leading C leading flat 7. This is C Dorian accidentals, which are B flat accidentals. And for half diminish, it's still uh, uh, the same accidentals, no avoid notes. So that's C minor 7. Sometimes if I want to really half diminish sound, I'll add the flat 5 in the bass. It's beautiful. Okay, so the point is you're producing chords with four notes, but they're all functioning as upper structures. And then you can start practicing like the different chord types. So this is C major 7, uh, uh, which is really B minor 7 over C, and you practice adding the bass. Let's do it, for example, on C minor 7 for fun. Still possible. Still possible. Still possible. Okay, now let me show you the coolest part, which is really trying to play uh, songs voice leading 3, 7, 9, 11. I know this is a very advanced concept, but I practiced this and I'll show you how it helped me with my improv too. So if I'm playing Stella by Starlight, it means that I'm playing uh, 11 chords from the 7 of my chords. So E half diminished really becomes D at 11. So I'm here with a bass of E. And for my A7 altered, it becomes G at 11 with I'm going to flat 9 too, so it becomes E flat 7. For my C minor 7, it's really going to become B flat at 11, which I can. It's this sound. And for the F7, it's going to uh, become E flat augmented, sharp 11. Okay, which is, uh, let me work that one out. This. Wait, I think, oh, sorry, E flat augmented at 11. Okay, so let's do E flat. E flat regular at 11 and augmented. Ah, that was correct actually. For my F minor 7, it's going to become this, which is E flat at 11, and for E flat, it'll become E at 11. So the point is, I'm really playing all these at 11 chords with voice leading, which is a really, really fascinating concept. And now when you listen to me play Stella by Starlight again, as I demonstrated a few minutes ago, I hope you can hear the difference.
Okay, so now you can understand where these textures are coming from, hopefully. Right, it's beautiful. See, I've killed my CPU. Now, finally, I want to show you the connection between all of this to improvisation. Why it's just not isoteric uh, harmonic study, but I think it actually has value for improvisers. Let me show you why. So this is uh, Stella by Starlight. And what I'll be trying to do is I'm going to try to be playing these um, upper structures of Ad 11. Not harmonically, but melodically. Okay, so it's going to sound something like this. I'll let you know what I'm doing so you can understand it. B e flat 11. B at 9. B e flat 11. structures let me give you like a focused example if i play c minor seven okay i'll just loop that c minor seven i can practice uh the b add 11 as an arpeggio over c minor which gives me all these cooler colors right this is just c minor and i'm playing these upper structures as a separate scale on a chord and that's uh, really really useful to get better colors uh, in the improv okay so let me finish up with like improvisation and I'm going to use all kinds of colors what I want you to notice is I'm really not playing the actual chords of Stella by Starlight I'm mostly playing all kinds of uh, random selected upper structures to color my improvisation like this <laughs>
Okay, I do hope you get the idea. Let me summarize this heavy, heavy lesson. You can use uh, uh, all four note harmonic events are reducible to five chordal types, which you can all practice on my Harmonic Explorer application. Uh, you should learn shape creation, voice leading, diatonic series. Once you have the basic shape, you can practice it as upper structure. In the lesson I provided today, I chose to really practice 3, 7, 9, 11, or a my, uh, an 11 chord starting from the, uh, from the seventh of the chord. So I really, really hope uh, this helps you practice. Uh, this is kind of my journey in music. I'm sure you have yours, but I've found many very exciting uh, things thinking this way. So thank you for watching this long, difficult lesson. Bye-bye.